Well, a very warm welcome to everyone who is with us today. Uh, I do see loads of people joining in, and I'm assuming some of them would be in the process too. Let's dive right into the session now. Uh, a topic today is US Visa 101. Uh, in this session, we'll be trying to cover the documents needed for a US visa authorization. We'll also be hearing about some of the tips from uh, international students as well as an immigration expert. Uh, and, and do keep in mind that the last 30 minutes will be all about the audience questions. So feel free to ask us anything that you would like to uh, about Empower, uh, about your student loans, about an international student experience, and we'll be happy to help you out with all of that, right? Uh, my name is Arbaz. I'll be your host for the day. And I work as a senior manager at Empower Financing and a fellow international student as well from India. I recently graduated from Johns Hopkins University from the RMB program and rejoined Empower, uh, which was my employer before going for an MBA as well. And, and for those who are new to our regular programming, uh, let me give you a very quick intro of what Empower is and what is it that we do, right? Uh, Empower is a US-based lender focused on international students. Uh, the like the, the application, the student loan that we offer do not require a collateral uh, co-signer, and it's it's totally based on the future income potential of the student. But this is not where our support ends. We do offer scholarships. We do offer a part to success program, which is open for all our borrowers for their career help, job search journey. And our, and our coaches really take, it, take out of the time to make sure that our borrowers have all the support and resources they need, right? Uh, moving on to the session, uh, we have two amazing panelists to help you navigate the US visa process. Uh, and if, if you are, I mean, if, if, I mean, I would love to hear from them first, and then we can bring on, like, jump right into the session. Art, do you want to go first? Um, well, my name is Art Saratelli, and I'm an immigration lawyer, and I help out with um, Empower projects because I really uh, value what they do. They um, are unique. You're not going to find any place that will help you finance your education and give you the advice you need up front to get all the paperwork correct, get the visa, come study, and then help you figure out the job market and the immigration aspect of getting permission to work. So I am happy to be here as a guest, and it is my pleasure to help. Awesome. We're lucky to have you here. Silver, do you want to go next? Uh, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Silver Yang. Uh, I'm from China. Uh, and I came to the U.S. to pursue my master's degree at American University um, like about 10 years ago. Um, I work at Empower now um, as a marketing manager and same as Arbus and Arthur that I also very proud of my uh, work experience at Empower uh, as an international student myself uh, that I I really enjoy to offer my help uh, to assist more fu future international students to uh, pursue their education in the US and Canada. Got it. Uh, before I move on to the first question, first topic of the day, uh, let me just give you guys a bit of a hint for all the questions that you wanna ask, use the Q&A option. That's right, should be in the below of the Zoom screen. Uh, click on that and feel free to ask your questions. Our chat moderators would try everything in their power to make sure that the questions are answered on the chat itself. If not, we'll take up life in the session too. Uh, but Silver, uh, uh, why don't you kick us off with a little bit about what has your story been as an international student? Uh, when did you come? What was your plans, dreams? Would love to hear from you. Um, okay. Um... I think my journey as an international student actually started before uh, I did my master's degree in the US. Um, back then when I was in college in China to pursue my bachelor degree uh, and there was a exchange program that my university had with a university in the US uh, for one semester um, and uh, the price was okay. Uh, and that was also a um, very new experience for me Be before I knew about this program that I had never thinking about me uh, going to study in a different country. Um, so I signed up uh, for this program and then uh, that pro program led me to here. That one semester I spent uh, actually in Arkansas in the U.S. Um, oh, wow. It's very different experience than me now living in Washington, D.C. 
Um, so back then, that one semester, I had the chance to uh, experience very different culture com compared to my home hometown in Beijing, China. Um, and I, I made many friends there. Uh, I think the, the people in Arkansas were very friendly and they helped me uh, to, to learn their culture, uh, to, to learn their new way of living life. And I think that it's, it's inspired me and make me made the choice of uh, coming to the U.S. to pursue my master's degree after I graduated in, in, in China. Um, and so after I got my master's degree, it was um, really, uh, really rewarding journey until now, but also uh, was also a nervous journey at the very beginning uh, because, you know, one day I was in my home country and the next and uh, I'm landing in the U.S. And it was like more than 7,000 miles away from China to the U.S. And I, I know it's going to be a whole new adventure ahead of me. So I was both very excited and very nervous at the same time. So, so to the people that are watching this webinar, and so if you're also feeling a little bit nervous about your upcoming journey, so I, I would like to share a tip that I had at the beginning of my journey is that um, the international student office at your school may be very helpful. So from my experience, my, my school, American University was very helpful and very proactive in giving me guidance. Uh, as soon as I received my offer and I was con I was contacted by a student RA from the International Student Office. And this RA was kind of like my superhero back then. So she guided me through the housing and transportation options. And I felt I could ask her about everything actually. And also um, what I remember the most is that before the trip to the US, she invited me to join this uh, small online community uh, that I could connect with people that who are also from my home country. Um, and so I actually uh, knew some friends from that community and I planned my travel to the U.S. with uh, students from that community. And we, we, we flew to the U.S. all together uh, and we all end up uh, renting apartment in the same building. <laughs> so like this shared experience really like made us to bond like really fast and also make me feel that I'm not uh, all by myself. Uh, and my university's international student office really uh, make sure that I had a good start of my international student journey in the US. Um, so, um, I think there is an international student office in almost every university. So if you already uh, receive your offer and uh, you, you haven't been in touch with this office, I would really strongly uh, recommend that you reach out and uh, they can be very helpful. So thank you so much for sharing that with us, Silver. Uh, you were very lucky to have that helpful RA as well. Uh, that yes. was a very nice experience. Uh, and moving on to the like the fundamental topics of, of the day as well, Art, uh, would you want to kick us off by maybe helping us understand what is a visa? Sure, sure. A visa is sim simply the United States government giving you permission to enter at the border, enter the country at the border for study or for work or whatever. You're going to get a visa for study. So you need that in your passport before you can do anything else. And um, how is, should I go into any more detail or is that good for now? Feel free to. Feel free to. Yeah. I mean, we can always pick up. Let's keep it fluid. <laughs> All right. So to get a visa to study, you need a couple of things. Well, more than a couple. You need five, um, five things. And, and I guess we'll just go right through the list. One, you have to be admitted and enrolled in a full-time course of study program. You've got to be um, proficient. You, you got to speak, understand, process English. You have to be proficient in English. You've got to have proof that you can afford to pay for your education. That's living expenses, 
and tuition primarily. And if you're borrowing money, that's a source of funding. If you have your own personal funds from your family, that's also another source of funding. But they make you list it right there on the visa paperwork. You have to put where the money's coming from and how much. And the amount of money varies by where you study. Arkansas is a really, really low cost of living. Uh, yes. Food is cheaper there. Everything is cheaper there. And it's a beautiful place. That's really nice. And, and, and um, um, if you go to New York City, you're going to need a lot more money. So, so funding varies by where you go study. Um, and then you're going to need, this is the most important thing. The most important thing is you got to get the point across that you're going to return back home. A visa for study is temporary. And when you're in the interview and the words are coming out of your mouth and you're directing your answers to the visa officer at the United States consulate, at that minute, when the words are coming out of your head, you have to believe and you have to have an intention to go back home. Now, you know, in a few years, when you get here, you could change your mind, but you have to have a plan that shows why it makes sense to come to America, spend a lot of money, study, and then go home and then repay your loan. That's all how it all has to add up. Where's the money coming from in the future? To repay the loan that's going to cover your education. Why do you need your education back home? Um, so you have to have. So, solid reasons. Like, for example, I'm engaged to my girlfriend. And if I don't come back home, she will kill me. That That's a good answer. Um, my girlfriend will kill me. Everybody can understand that. Every, everybody's girlfriend wants to kill them. Uh, go watch. The, you see, there's a new Barbie movie. Go watch that. Um, um, and, and, and then the last thing is that um, you have to express why your education is the draw. Why are you coming here to learn? Don't say I'm coming to America because I love the United States and I can't wait. Oh, it's the beacon of uh, freedom and liberty and I can just do whatever I want and it's going to be the best place to live and I can't wait to live there and set up my life there. That's the wrong answer. You're, you, you, you're not supposed to be here after you study. You study, you work as part of your study, and then you're supposed to go home. But remember, you can change your mind in the future when you're already here. Okay. Does that, does that cover it? Yes, it does. And, and you mentioned something about uh, the proof of funds, Arthur. Uh, you mentioned that people could use personal savings. You could use some, uh, some like their family savings as well. What other options could people use on, for example, what, like, are they known for these proof of funds document? Are they known by some other names uh, at the same time? What other avenues can people choose? Because these are all personal money and not everybody can afford uh, U.S. education through their own personal savings as well. It's a pretty expensive right. deal. Right. right. All right. So to get this visa and prove the financial part of the picture and to prove that you've been accepted and admitted to a college, the first thing you do, there's two pieces of paper that are without you, you without these two pieces of paper, you can't you can't get in the door to the to get a visa. So number one, you need the letter of financial support from Empower. If you're borrowing money from Empower, you will get documentation of the amount. That letter. If, if it's in combination with some personal funds, that's fine. But that letter of financial support from Empower goes to the school. They review it as part of your overall application. And then they issue, the school issues a government document. The school is an agent of the United States government to issue you an immigration document called the I-20. The I-20 has listed on it all sorts of things, which you're going to study, where you're going to school, <clears throat> and the cost of your education and living expenses. And then on the I-20, it explains where the money is coming from. And if you have an Empower 
financial support letter, that'll be listed on the I-20. And then you take both of those things and all this other stuff, you take that to the consulate to get your visa. And uh, just, I mean, for the people who do not know, I-20 will be a document that as long as you study in that university, you'll be using that every time you enter into the US. Uh, so that's a very important document, right? Uh, but anything else that we, we feel that an I-20 needs to cover art or silver here uh, before we move on to a, like the next segment? Silver? Um, no, I think both you and Arthur covered uh, most of it. Yes, I-20 is very important. Make sure that you don't lose it. Um, and and yeah, but every if, time, um, yeah, just ahead. like uh, as a student status, every time when you enter US and you will need to show I-20 uh, to the custom. To the, yeah, exactly, to the customs of Borders Patrol. But if you, if in the audience, if you're someone who's looking to use or leverage student loans to help cover the tuition cost, uh, no matter where you take the loans from, you should remember to start the loan application as soon as possible because only then you'll be able to obtain the I-20 and then begin the visa process because your visa process would require your I-20. And you should also remember that this is the time where if you are requesting an I-20, most of the schools would have multiple requests already coming in. So keep in mind that they would be backlogged. If they are understaffed, it's going to take a lot of time for you to obtain your I-20. So start the process as soon as possible. And uh, and hopefully it should be able to get you back on timeline, right? No matter what the delays are, right? So let's assume we got the proof of funding. We got the I-20. Uh, what's next? Oh, how do we, like, we begin the visa process. We fill in the application. And then the most difficult part of all comes into, which is the visa appointment, right? Something that we have always done. I mean, if I, if I could just happen to mention that I got rejected twice on a B1, B2, right? But... Uh, from that standpoint, uh, the, you have seen so many students come and go, uh, you know, for, uh, and struggle and challenge and be nervous about it, the whole visa process. What has your experience been when you have seen so many people go through that uh, visa, visa process art? And um, what you, would your recommendations be? So you only have maybe two or three minutes to get the point across and the point to you get across is based on whatever they ask you. Don't just go in there and start talking. You just wait and smile and then they ask you questions. But in the process of answering, it would be very nice if you could um, convey why you want to study in the United States or in Canada, why it makes economic sense to spend money in a different currency and borrow it when in the future you're going home, uh, you got to repay it. So how does that all make sense? What's your plan? You got to have a plan and the plan can't be, oh, I want to come to America because I want to sightsee. It's a beautiful, big place. I could go to the Grand Canyon. Oh, I can't wait to go. I might even live there one day. Wrong, wrong, wrong. No, 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 no. You've got to have a reason and to show you're going home when you're in that interview. That's the, so the biggest thing is you got to have an intent to return home because that's what temporary students do. They go home. They don't stay. And again, you could change your mind in the future. But in that interview, you have to have a plan that involves borrowing money, studying a subject that will let you succeed back home and pay off the loan to pay for your education. So how are you going to do that? Why are you picking this particular school? Young lady, why did you go to university, uh, the American University in Washington, D.C.? Why? From Beijing? What? What? Why? Uh, why not L.A. where there's movie stars? Why didn't you go there? Um, uh, what's your plan? So what's your plan? How are you going to pay back your loan? And why do you have to go home? Remember, when you walk in that door of the embassy, when you walk in the consulate, you are being presumed. It's a presumption that you will break the rule and you won't follow the visa rules and you'll graduate and just stay. 
you got to overcome that assumption. They're trained by law to assume you're lying, that you will stay when you're supposed to go home. So you've got to have a reason why you're going home. And people talk about financial uh, assets in a bank. You own a house, you own land, you have family there. Yeah, everybody's got a grandma. Grandma drops dead. You have to have a reason right now that is real for going back home. Your girlfriend's going to kill you if you don't. That I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. You have to have something visceral. It's got to make sense. Or and your boyfriend is uh, um, insecure and he can't survive without you because uh, we all know that women are smarter and stronger than men. So you got to go home because this boyfriend will shrivel up and die if you don't go back to him or something like that. Those okay. answers make sense. Got okay, it. Sh- uh, no, no, that was perfect. Uh, Silver, what uh, would you like to elaborate on your experience? What What was it like? I know it was long back, but... How did you prepare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was- yeah um, so definitely totally agree with what Arthur just said. Um, and I actually want to talk about two stories. One, one is my own firsthand ex- experience of getting visa the first time. And the second is this one friend that I I I came to Arkansas with. Um, so interestingly that, you know, that I, we, we both went to Ar- Arkansas for this uh, exchange program when we were doing our bachelor degree, right? And that was the second year in our university. Um, and after this one semester, we, we really networked well with the principals uh, of one of the schools uh, in that university in, in, in Arkansas. And they actually issued us I-20, uh, at the at the end of that program, and they wanted us to transfer to that university uh, to continue our bachelor degree. Um, so both me and my friend found it very interesting, and then we re- received this offer, and then we took the I twenty. We went to the visa office to to try to get our visa. So we actually booked our appointment on the same day, and. Uh, he was just standing in front of me <laughs> in the in the line uh, in the embassy. Yeah. So we both went in, but we we went to different window talking to different officer. And he was just like right next to me there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's about like six to seven meters away from me. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can kind of hear, you know, what he is talking. So my friend, uh, his name is Eric. Um, he failed on his attempt for visa. Uh, well, I got approved. Um, he he actually spoke very good English, way better than me. And he he really enjoyed uh, talking with Americans to practice his 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 language. And he he really believed uh, in the lifestyle in the U.S. So I I feel um, that he actually made a mistake. Arthur just mentioned is that he was a bit too excited in uh, talking about his plan in the US. He's going to visit um, uh, Grand Canyon <laughs> and uh, he's going to probably like rent an apartment and his career goal like, after he graduated uh, in the US. He probably like talked all of that super excitingly uh, for longer than my interview. And my interview was shorter, very simple. Um, yeah, but but there was a fun experience is that I was very nervous before I entered the office. And I was, because that was my first time and people say that if you got rejected, they actually uh, leave a record uh, with embassy. And, and if you try again, then they will ask you that, why did you fail the first time? And so I, I value this uh, first time attempt really much. Uh, so I went in and I I prepared my answer for all the questions. There are like a list of questions they may ask uh, at the interview online, and and I I also consulted this uh, visa agency and to help me to prepare all those uh, questions and answers in English. Uh, but as soon as I got in, I said hi, and then the officer was like ni hao, <laughs> was saying Chinese to me, 
Yeah, he was saying that he has been trying to practice his Chinese and he has been working in Beijing for a while uh, for this job. And he's trying to uh, use all his chance talking to the interview is uh, to practice his Chinese. And uh, he just, yeah, that, that definitely make me feel less nervous because I know that this guy, he's super friendly and he doesn't really see, see this as a serious thing. And he just wants to help me to get through this. Um, but all the officers are different. It really depends. And it's definitely human interaction with uh, each one. So I think just uh, one one tip is don't uh, show as too excited. <laughs> don't overshare. Um, trying to only answer the question in a nice and polite way. Um, they will ask you, why do you choose this university? And you can tell tell them about your school ranking. This is a good university I'm going to. And uh, right, and they can ask, why do you choose this major? And many times your major may be correlated to your major in college. So you can say that uh, I, I want to uh, per pursue uh, deeper down this path uh, for the same major I pursued in my college. And, and if you want, want to change ma ma major, that happens to many, many, many people too. And then you, you, can, you can also think about reasons like, um, yeah, I I studied this uh, back in my college, uh, but I had some internship maybe, and uh, it makes me it inspired me to pursue a different one. So uh, and and I learned about this program. So I think this is a very uh, high quality program that can help me um, to change my career path. Uh, so this is why I choose this school and this program. And this is why I come to the U.S. Got it. Uh, and and Art, in addition to the, as you mentioned, the ironclad reason that you have to come back to your home country, uh, do the students need to carry any other things uh, while they go for the interview, uh, actually? Um, I guess the um, um, I-20, the the letter for funding, do you take anything else? Uh, Silver, what, what was your experience? Uh, you got to use your, you got to show photo ID to get in. Um, what did you bring? It's not really paper based. I mean, they look at paper, there's a file, but it's just, it's it, the whole interview is two minutes, three minutes, just answering questions and smiling and being polite. Um, uh, yeah. I'm not, I, when you say <laughs> other documents, I guess I'm a, a little thrown by that. Um, Sorry about that, though. I think I think I over prepared actually on that That's day. Cool. I, I definitely over prepared. Uh, definitely passport. You have to have a passport and uh, your ID, uh, your national ID of your country. Um, I I twenty and I brought a uh, proof of funding. So back then. Um, there was no Empower, so I couldn't bring the visa support letter provided by Empower. Uh, and I I got my support letter from a local bank. Um, and what else? So I also brought a certificate of, of my family property. Uh, but while I was doing the interview, I feel that officer didn't really look at that. He only checked my passport, my proof of funding, my I-20. Um, that's all. Um, and Nobody, what else I brought? I think I brought more. Oh, yes. They also uh, ask you to uh, bring this confirmation uh, page of the visa application fee. You have to bring service that. Fee. Yeah. 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 Service fee. Yes. Um, I think... I was pretty much in the same boat. I were prepared as well uh, from everything from my university documents to my documents of business ownership to my previous income tax returns to my bank statements to test scores, everything. And I was only asked for my I-20 and passport. Right. So all in all, they definitely, and my interview was also pretty much under one minute. Uh, they just asked me very basic questions. However, I mean, and, and that's where I, I would love to uh, pose this as a, as a question too. It ends up being only a two to three minute conversation and wherein no documents are needed. 
and yet there is so much pressure so much struggle around it so many challenges around it does it is it just because of the fact that well it's it's a it's an elimination first process wherein as long as you uh, you know you can show me enough reasons to re- approve you i can otherwise it's all a rejection or is it just that we have because the students give it their heart and soul to prepare for their education experience in in the us or canada it's just that there's so much nervousness around it that what if i fail what if i reject what what has your experience been about like why does it such a big deal uh, is it just because of the efforts behind it or just the nature of the process um well, well i what i was going to say is that you get different adv- pieces of advice from different people and after a while your head just starts to spin so just common sense how do you explain this is all you need to know <laughs> how do you explain in common sense very short window of time 2 minutes but you don't make a speech you answer the questions but you want to convey that you're coming to the school in America for this reason you're going to study this topic for this reason and going to that school to learn that subject will make you successful back home because and fill in the blank and you no know, what i was going to say earlier is the uh, poor silver brought evidence of property as ties to china no one's going back to china because there's land there what are you going to go kiss the land no one has if you're getting down to ownership of property or ownership of a car to go back home you, no uh uh-uh. uh you, you have to have a real, real my father owns a company and if he is proud of my studies and i learn what he wants me to learn i'm going to become ceo of his company that's a reason i was giving you reasons before about love now we'll talk you know money business there, yes. there, i have a job offer i worked at ernst and young as a consultant before i planned to go to get an mba what with my mba i can come back and work at ernst and young again and specialize in economic development or something um and be a consultant so you need reasons to return and you need a logical reason why you're going to study where you're going to study and the last thing how you're going to pay back the money how you're going to make it all make economic sense that's really it and all this other stuff about paper they don't look at paper they look at you right i mean uh, silver, I, I, what do you think are are bad silver what, what do you guys think oh i was just going to connect it right. go ahead silver <laughs> so uh i think that's right um so while, while i was talking to the officer and uh, i remember he briefly just on a cad my document right so so they actually say that um if they are going to reject you that they will re- return your passport to you on site they won't even take it and if they are going to approve you they will take your passport and uh to to verify you know with, with their team So at that time that they 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 took my passport after a very brief interaction with me um didn't really look at all the documents they just look at the passport and i20 basically that's all seems like that's all they really care about um and they want to talk to you they they want to see that uh if you are going to if if you are the type of person that is going to like stay in the US um or maybe you you are being honest that you were going back to your home country um yeah that's my experience i think i would love to connect of uh, both of your points to the fact that there is already so much misinformation in this in this particular segment so many advices uh which might not even make sense at times i would my advice would be to make sure that you do your research properly uh it's ultimately is going to be as i've mentioned a 2 minute 3 minute conversation uh silver also mentioned the same thing i also had a similar experience the focus should have been more about how to explain my story better rather than what all proofs can i carry with me and and make them convince convince them of my uh genuinity my genuine application right 
Uh, that should be the process, I, I believe. Uh, but but as you mentioned, that well, nobody is thinking about migrating to US at least until the the visa process. Let's say they've got the visa process, they are in the US, and they do like the country and they want to possibly stay here as well for uh, as long as possible. What are some of the options that international students can take? And I know that we have switched gears to a different topic now, a post-visa journey of the international students, but I think Silver also has a bit of uh, information to add there. So I think this would be a good uh, uh, segment to leave our audience with some of the things before we take their questions. Okay. Um, so Empower has a program to complement the program at your university, which is the Career Development Center, if you want to work with your student visa after you graduate, that's called OPT, Optional Practical Training, and you can get work experience in America. And um, Empower realizes that some universities are really, really good at helping international students, and maybe some other ones are not so good, but they're not bad. They're just, eh. So Empower has its own career development center. It's called Path Path to Success. Um, and they will guide you. And I help out with that part too, because to get a job is one part of the process, but then you've got to get the permission to stay in the job to work. The government permission it is partially optional practical training, but if you really like that job and you wanna stay longer, um, you need something to replace optional practical training. And there are a, a 12, there are 12 work visas out there, 12. It's not just the, the one you've heard about, you've heard about the H-1B. H-1B, you simply need at least a four-year college education and the job that you get requires you to have the four-year college education that you got. So that's an H-1B. And there's a limit on the number of those every year. So one of the alternatives is an H-1B with no lottery. And those are for universities. If you go work at a university or nonprofit research organizations or nonprofit organizations affiliated with a university like a teaching hospital so but that's at the in the future but i guess what I, the point is there are a, a 12 visa choices one of them only one is that rotten h1b and there are ways to get around it if someone wants to put you in line for an h1b let them let them do it who cares you win or you don't you get it or you don't but there's other choices too and Empower will give you resources that you can use to find employment in addition to the resources of your school. Got it. Silva, do you want to add any, any information on that? What was your experience uh, being on this side of the journey? Yeah, and I, I want to thank you, Arthur, for mentioning that there are actually all different types of work visa in the U.S. And uh, H-1B is definitely the most famous one. And people all talk about it. And you can see it all over the social media. And when when the lottery successful rate going down and people feel nervous, like, does it mean that U.S. should, should not be my destination? Um, and but yes, yeah, there are all type of uh, work visa. I actually didn't uh, get H-1B. I used J-1 visa to um, uh, work in the U.S. And uh, J-1 visa can also uh, lead you to a green card too, uh, same as H-1B. And it depends on the organization or company that you work for. And you may need to wait in line in the queue, like maybe, you know, it can be as crazy as five or 10 years and, or like depends on which, which country you're originally from. And for example, my boyfriend, he's from New Zealand and he's using H1B to get his, his green card in the US and he only wait for one year it's very fast. Um, so for me, it was, uh, I remember it was like, two or three years um, uh, after I, I started to use my J-1 visa, visa to apply for green card. And I actually also know that um, 
I have this um, friend uh, that has H1B that was waiting for five years to get a green card. Um, yeah, just all all different visas and there are different paths and uh, all can go to Rome. <laughs> yes. Cool. Thank you so much, both of you. Uh, let's, shall we take some audience questions now? Cool. Uh, the first one is, uh, in the visa process, will there be a question about how am I going to pay back the loan? And anybody can take, both Silver and Arthur, anybody. Did you get a question like that? Um, I did. I definitely did in my visa interview. Yeah, that was the so, idea. Did you get that? Did you get it? No, back then there was no Empower. I wish I could uh, use uh, proof of fund funding provided by Empower, but no. But you, but, but, you got a bank but of you did China. Take a loan. Yeah. yeah, you did take a loan though. No, no, that's uh, no, that's saving. Okay. I showed them the saving. Savings uh, account, got it. Got it. I was definitely asked this question about how will I pay back the loan? And I had to enter into some sort of a future plan for myself as to what is my career plan now? Like what kind of opportunities am I targeting? What kind of sectors am I choosing? How does it make sense from my past experience? And there is a proper income logic here that yes, I can earn money to repay the loan too. That's how I answered this uh, question. I don't know if it was the answer that the interviewer was looking for, but I definitely got my visa for this answer. (laughs) Uh, there's another question. I think uh, you can help us with this one, uh, Art. Uh, what can you do if the embassy has retained your passport and your status is showing refused under 221G? Any advice on that? Lord have mercy. So they refused you, but they took your passport. Maybe they refused you after they took the passport. Um, I would definitely inquire what in the world is going on how could you keep my passport and not give me the visa to be a student the visa goes in that passport you're refusing my visa tell me why and give me my passport back so um don't be passive do not be passive they're just in their government workers pushing paper looking at the clock they want to go home at five o'clock they have no emotional attachment to your life or your passport. And if there's inconsistent signals, you got to sort out and it's your problem to figure out what's going on. Um, Has this happened to anybody on the panel? No, uh, a friend of mine did say that uh, his visa got refused after they took it. Uh, So I don't know uh, what happened there, but eventually they got the visa. Uh, definitely something good happened with their profile and it wasn't as serious as they thought it would be. That's the only uh, kind of information that I know for this, but yeah. yeah it might be, a there, there could be like administrative processing or some could weird be. background check, um, but you, you need to know what the problem is so you could help them. You don't, don't, don't go in there and say, well, where's my visa? You're, 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 you're denying my visa and you have my passport. Blah, 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 blah. Don't be a jerk, but don't, be passive either. Don't let them walk all over you. Away, who are you? You you notice something that just doesn't make okay. sense. You notice something that doesn't make sense, and you want to help them figure out what's going on. Anything you could do to help them help you. Let, you know, be be kind of. That's your attitude. That's the attitude you take with them. You're trying to help them help you when you really just want to curse at them and grab them by the shirt and you but you can't don't do that you go to jail i'll put you in jail so if, if something unfortunate happens investigate it with a smile and you know get to the bottom of it plus there would be a big glass between you and the officer so you can't really hold him them by the shirt too not a problem. Have to go under the window then they're like a little the, the, the a little the, yeah you need to be very flexible to make sure that you go through that. And then you, anyway, moving from the logistics of the visa interview process, uh, Silver, maybe you can answer the, help us answer this question and I, I feel free to add on to it. After securing an empowered loan, do I still need to show proof of finance before getting the visa? Or does this change depending upon the situations of the student? So um, after 
Empower approved Yurongong application, and uh, you will receive this uh, proof of funding letter. It's called Visa Support Letter, and you can use this letter to uh, to send it to your school to get your I twenty. And uh, on the day of visa appointment, that you will bring your I twenty and also this uh, visa support letter of Empowers, and to to show it to the embassy's officer. And uh, Empower support letter is the proof of funding. And and if if that funding, if the number of the amount showing on the letter uh, is less than the amount showing on your I-20, uh, you might also want to try to fill the gap, like maybe use your saving, proof of saving, you know, maybe use your uh, family's in, income certificate that if you can get that, and to to prove to the officer that you have enough funding to fund your study uh, in the U.S. Understood. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll give you a, uh, maybe an evolved version of this question as well. So Silva mentioned something about if there is a gap between your I-20 amount and your Empower loan, right? So assuming that, let's take an example, let's take the I-20 amount is to be $40,000. So should our proof of funding be exactly $40,000, whether we are doing it with the loans and some personal savings, should it be more than that? Is there a rationale behind it? Yeah, I would make it 40 or more. Um, in other words, don't go in there with a gap. Just like Silver said, if the I-20 estimates the cost of tuition and living and books and all that is 40, and you go in there with an Empower loan for 30, you're missing 10. So money in the bank, like the savings uh, certification from uh, uh, Silver's Bank, um, this, you could also get income, proof of family income, because you don't need money saved exclusively. You can have income coming in and use that ongoing flow of money into the family to pay the bill and whatever you would be uh, using in, in your country as an appropriate proof of that. In America, they love a tax return. They will look at your tax return. So, so you get, what did, what did you call it, Silver, the cer cer certificate of income? Um, yeah, I mean, or it can be called proof of income. So is yeah. this a letter that it will say that, for example, your mom's name, like Amy, <laughs> I'm, I'm the mother of Silver and I work at this company and my annual salary is this much. And then usually you should have the company stamp or a signature uh, and then you will show, show that to the embassy. And if, if you can have the letterhead of the company, that'll be better. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Understood. And, and we have seen that people with uh, good funding uh, options at the same time, good universities as well, have been rejected too. Uh, what, what could be a possible reason for those kind of rejections where the funding and the university seems on point, but still the candidate got rejected? Could it be the intent to immigrate? Yeah, they perhaps were too excited about going to America. <laughs> I can't wait to get there. I hear in New York City, it's open all night long, all night. It's neon lights. It looks like daytime in, in Times Square. At midnight, it looks like it's six o'clock in the morning. It's great. I can't wait to go. Yes. Yeah. Don't be like my friend, Eric. He was too excited and he got rejected. Cool. <laughs> Lesson of the day, don't be like Eric. Don't be like Eric, right? Eric, yes. I remember that tip. Geography. Uh, Geography. Why are you going to a certain school? I'm going to Columbia or NYU because of the good pizza and bright lights of Broadway in Manhattan. No, no. It, geography. If you start talking about places in America, it's over. Oh. It's business, career, studies, logical studies for your logical uh, return home. Done. Don't be too excited about America. It's, yeah, it's another place. It's just another place. Cool. Understood. I'll keep that in mind. And, and last question before we uh, you know, wrap up the session with some final words. Uh, what if there is a deferral? What if a student defers their admission to the next year and they've already paid the service fee? 
for this year itself will they get a new will they will the transmitters get the same service id or will they get a new one or should they be worried about it i ask this because i have a very personal uh, uh, anecdote from the story too uh, a friend of mine got detained at the entry point in immigration because he deferred his admission and his uh, his internal records did not reflect that he has deferred so according to them his one year opt had ended when he returned so so yeah. i was just wondering what happens here i would assume they give you the same i20 cuz you've already paid the fee but they annotate it they print a new one so like every time you come to the border you give them the most recent version recent. Your I twenty, yeah. the 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 I twenty Cevis number is the same. It's the same I twenty, but it's Indeed. updated yeah. with new information. So if you if you defer somewhere in your I twenty stat, you're going to have a lot of I twenties when you're done. It, one of them better say you deferred. Um, um, so how did it happen in your friend's case? What, what did he do? Oh, they eventually reached out to university, and the university rectified it because the university did not close the previous service that we when he originally paid for it, and they gave him a new one. So, uh, on for him, the 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 like the connection it was showing with the previous one, and that's why it felt like oh, your two year program and your one year OPT is done. Ah, uh, okay. So he had two different ones. That's how that school handled it. Yeah, but. They never communicated to him what to take to the border. That can actually I, happen. So I have a personal experience. Actually, um, you know, I have been in the U.S. like for about ten years, and I have graduated from AU for about eight years, right? But actually, up until last year, every time when I cross the border, when I enter the U.S., that they always uh, take me to the room on the side. We call it black room um, to uh, to verify my document. And only until last year, and this officer was really nice to tell me that, you know why are you always getting to the room? It's because when you graduated, your university didn't uh, actually end your service record on their system. So in the system, you are still H1, uh, so F1 visa F1. student. <laughs> but I'm already a green card holder. And so they have to verify everything again and to make sure that what is my status. So um, this may be a little bit too early for you guys, but you know, like when you end your program with your university, make sure that you talk to them and make sure that they end your service status in the system. Uh, I know we had only one minute away from the end of the session. Uh, before we wrap up, any final words, guys? Uh, I'll start with Silver and then with Art. Um, final word is that visa experience, uh, you know, before you experience that, it may feel nervous, but you, have, you know, after you experience that, it can be actually very easy. Uh, it's very smooth. Just uh, answer the question. Uh, don't be too excited. Don't be too nervous. Okay. Uh, just be normal. <laughs> be normal. Don't be like Eric. Yeah, be a normal <laughs> human being talking to a human. We know. Being. So, we we all know so much about Eric now. But yeah, love to meet him. You never dated Eric, did you? We don't want you. you stay away from Eric. No. You did not go on dates with Eric. No, just friends. No. <laughs> that is correct. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, Eric, don't be Eric. like Eric. Eric was too enthusiastic. He was too happy. He spoke English fluently. He wanted to show. He was almost like an American. Eh. No good. Makes sense. Would that be your final words for the session, Art? Or would you have some other advice to leave the students with? Don't be like Eric? Yeah, don't That's be like cool. Eric. Be normal. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, yeah, there's no <laughs> final word. I'll leave it the stage to Arthur. Disclaimer for Eric, we're only kidding. This is all for humor. It's parody, Eric. We're yeah. not, this isn't anything to malign your character. You're a good young man, Eric. We we really like you. I was going to say love, but she's got a guy from New Zealand. So it, this is not anything malicious. It's just humorous, just to make a point, to educate all the students in the audience, Eric, 
that they have to be just low key, normal, and answer the questions and communicate a plan why this program at this school and how is that going to help you make money after school back home and it all Such has to perfect be perfect words yeah, yeah. don't be like upset it better <laughs> yeah you did actually you said don't be like eric that's the right answer <laughs> and silver said silver did you know that eric was going to be the highlight of this whole thing did you know that <laughs> I I know about that because I always tell his stories to my friends. But uh, he's actually a very successful businessman now. Right. Uh, See, even <laughs> Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you get re rejected, doesn't matter. And you know, life can can lead you to somewhere uh, probably better suit for you. For me, after my rejection, I still came to US. So that wasn't the plan. Yes, our bus. But, rejection. Uh, Rejection, right? It, you have a second chance. You have you can go back. Exactly. Yeah, if you if you play your cards right, rejection is not end of the game. I got rejected yeah. and I still got a visa. Yeah, that's right. Eric and with didn't. that, <laughs> okay. He, with he that, went to Europe. That, he did. Eric, Eric went to Europe. Yeah, he went to Europe. Uh, yeah, we can talk about him like, well, later. Well, good, good <laughs> for very, Eric. Very I'm really happy for Eric and. Uh, for everyone in the audience, I hope uh, the session helped you. Where, uh, like while we were on the topic of Eric and outside of it as well on the visa processes too, it was a pleasure hosting all of you and having you, Arthur and Silver, joining this session as well and helping the students. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll be sharing the recording too. Uh, if you missed out anything, feel free to uh, take you know sneak up you uh, on that. Yeah. Bye. -bye.